What's up YouTube, this is Demkeys and today we're going to take a look at high speed collision detection. We're going to see the difference between discrete, continuous and continuous dynamic collision detection modes. Let's start off by setting up the scene, create a cube, change its scale to 20 on Y and 20 on Z and move it a little to the side. Make a duplicate of that cube, bring it a little to the left side and change the scale to 10 on X, 10 on Y and 1 on Z and make sure your transform gizmo toggle is set to local not global and then rotate this cube so that it's local z-axis is now facing this cube. Let's rename the first cube to wall. Now add a rigid body component to the second cube, freeze the rotation on the x, y and z axes and uncheck use gravity because we don't want gravity to affect this object. Now make another duplicate of this second cube and bring it close to the first cube. Change its scale to 5 on x and 5 on y and then rotate it so that its local z-axis is facing the second cube. Now rename the second cube to player and the third cube to auto. Alright, for the time being, let's disable the auto game object and select the player object and add a new script to it called move script 02. Open it up in mono develop. Alright, public float move force, public float shoot force, private rigid body our body. Then in the start method, add a reference to the rigid body component. And then in the update method, type float v equals input dot get axis raw. We want to get the vertical axis multiplied by move force. Next, our body dot add force transform dot forward multiplied by v. Next, if input dot get key down, key code dot space, rigid body dot add force, transform dot forward, multiplied by shoot force. So what's going to happen is if the space bar is pressed, then shoot force is going to be used. Otherwise, move force is going to be used. Save the script, go back to unity. And before playing the game, let's set the values for our variables. Move force should be 50 and shoot force should be 50,000. Before playing the game, drag this game tab down here because we are not really concerned with what's going on in the game tab. We need to just see what's happening in the scene view. Now hit play and as you can see basic movement is working. When we apply a force of 50 regular collision happens but when I hit space watch what happens. Our player went right through the wall. Now the reason why this is happening is because we are currently using discrete collision detection. Discrete collision detection works fine for normal collision detection. That is collision that's not happening at really high speeds. But if you have an object that's moving really fast, then you should use continuous collision detection instead of discrete. So set collision detection to continuous and play the game. And as you can see, even at high speed, collision is now being detected. All right, continuous collision detection helps with high speed collision when it comes to static colliders, meaning game objects that do not have a rigid body attached to them. But watch what happens when we use continuous collision detection with a dynamic collider, meaning a game object that does have a rigid body attached to it. Let's enable our auto game object and add a script to this game object, call it auto move script O2. Open it up in mono develop. All right, this is gonna be a really short script. Public float move force, private rigid body, our body, in the start method, add a reference to the rigid body component. And in the update method, our body dot add force transform dot forward multiplied by move force. Save the script, go back to unity, set the value for our move force variable to five. Now let's play the game and see what happens. As you can see, normal collision detection works, but at a high speed, the player goes right through the auto object. The reason for this is that with dynamic colliders, you require continuous dynamic collision. So either one of these two objects has to have its collision detection mode set to continuous dynamic. It could either be the player or the auto game object, but either one of them has to have its collision detection set to continuous dynamic. So set the collision detection mode for either one of the objects to continuous dynamic and then hit play. And now, even at high speed, the player doesn't go through the auto object. Now let me explain how these modes work. For example, if we set our player game object's collision detection mode to discrete, then the player game object is going to use discrete collision detection against all other colliders in the scene. And other colliders will also use discrete collision detection when testing for collision against this game object. And as you saw earlier, discrete collision detection is good for normal collisions, not for high speed collisions. Now, when you set the collision detection to continuous, this game object is going to use discrete collision detection against dynamic colliders, 
is, meaning game objects that have a rigid body attached to them, but it will use continuous collision detection against static colliders, meaning game objects that do not have a rigid body attached to them. Now, if you set the collision detection to continuous dynamic, this object is going to use continuous collision detection against objects that are set to continuous and continuous dynamic collision. It will also use continuous collision against static colliders, meaning game objects that do not have a rigid body attached to them. And for all other colliders, it's going to use discrete collision detection. Now, this might seem confusing at first, but once you try it out yourself, it's going to become more clear to you. Bear in mind, continuous and continuous dynamic collision detection both have a big impact on the physics performance. So only use them if it's actually required. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you'd like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen. And in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.